Hey guys, how you doing? It's Tom. I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you tonight about cultural norms and how they control the minds of the masses. How people are unable to break free from the cultural paradigm which they are born into. And we see this all the time. Usually when there's groups of people, they all do things the same way. And if anyone deviates from the way things are done within that group, or even if they're looking at an outsider... They say, this person is an extremist, this person is a radical, this person is weird, and that person might face condemnation, ridicule, whatever it may be. It's very hard to be different from the people around you. So let's, let's use food as an example. We look at society today, what do we see? Everyone's eating Burger King. Everyone's eating McDonald's. Everyone's eating Subway. Yeah, eat fresh. Okay. And the cancer rates go up and up and up. And the heart attack rates go up and up and up. And the diabetes rates go up and up and up. And then these same people who eat McDonald's, who eat Burger King, who eat Subway, who eat Wendy's, they'll look at you and say, man, this cancer, man, these heart attacks, diabetes, huh? How is this happening? I can't figure it out. But then those very same people we'll look at someone who does things a little bit differently. Maybe they have a friend that goes off the reservation and decides to eat 100% organic food. And usually this person who goes organic will face ridicule, condemnation. Oh, you don't want to eat a burger? Oh, you don't want McDonald's? Whatever it might be. And the people who are putting out the shame toward the person who's doing things differently never stop to think about how they're impacted by cultural norms, by societal norms. So eating organic, essentially all that means is you're trying to eat food without pesticides on it. Glossophate, the primary ingredient in Roundup, which um, is the big product from Monsanto, Monsanto the devil, has been linked to cancer. And GMOs, genetically modified organisms, are food who have their cellular structures opened up in the seeds and they are injected with, in many cases, a special type of mold um, which is resistant to Roundup. So basically you could spray pesticides on it and the crops won't die, but the nutritional value of the crops, whatever you're growing, um, is pretty much completely removed. So you feel like you're eating healthy, but you're eating junk. So someone who's eating organic is just trying to avoid the pesticides and the GMOs. Now, if you took the same situation, if you took a group of people who magically appear, they're immaculately created, and you put them on an island, and they start to develop their own culture and whatnot, what they would do is they would eat food that grows naturally from the earth. And there would be no GMOs and no pesticides. And then maybe... Um, someone start, figures out how to make GMOs or someone develops their own pesticide and they say, I'm going to spray it on the food. Well, the people around, um, the people in this new society would say, okay, well, what's in the pesticides? Ooh, this might cause cancer. I better not have it. No way. You're an extremist. You're crazy. I'm not going to eat that. What do you mean you're going to cut the cut into the cellular structure of the fruit and put a mold that your cancer-causing pesticide doesn't kill into the food and then you want me to eat it? No, that's extreme. That's radical. You see? So, but now we've established that eating the GMOs, eating the pesticides is actually what's radical. But in our society, because everyone does it, the person who eats organic is called radical. And people have a very difficult time even knowing, even if you present them with the study, study after study after study, which shows these things are harmful, people are still unable to change their ways because they're controlled by cultural norms. People are not free thinkers. So you see, it is the people who are controlled by these cultural norms that are the actual extremist. It is the free thinkers who are an extremist. It's the person who says, I don't care that you all eat McDonald's, I'm going to eat organic food because I've looked at the data and I'm able to adjust the way I lived based on logic and reason and factual information.
but people who are controlled by culture norms, they are radical. That's extreme. You're going to keep eating food that you know causes cancer. When you see the cancer rates, you see how we all know some people that die from cancer. So, and you see this um, with example after example. I've done reports on water and how fluoride is poured into the water. Well, knowing what we know now, someone who doesn't want to drink fluoride is condemned, right? You filter your fluoride, you're a weirdo, you're a radical, you're an extremist. Why are you doing this? Everyone drinks the fluoride. But if no one drank the fluoride and society had the knowledge that they have now, and you do one quick Google search, and you type in the 12, um, 12 known neurotoxins, and fluoride came up. And then this, someone came along and said, guys, I have an idea. I'm going to pour fluoride into the water. Go ahead, drink it. No one would drink it because it's not the cultural norm. And they would be right to They'd say, this is crazy. What do you mean? We're not going to drink a known neurotoxin. But you see... We know in real in the real world that it is a known neurotoxin, yet everyone drinks it because that's what everyone else does. You see, the norm is the extremism. The norm is the radical. It's the free thinker who controls their own destiny. And everyone else is the radical. The free thinker is the person who actually is sane, who is logical. You see this with vaccinations, 12 known neurotoxins, mercury, lead aluminum you wouldn't you wouldn't in you wouldn't drink these because they're 12 known neurotoxins right that's actually a perfect example i like doing this when i just go off my head because you never know what's going to come to me so again if you if people if everyone didn't receive vaccinations if the fda didn't say it was safe then it would be very hard to get people to do it but because everyone does it you're deemed a radical, an extremist, if you don't want your child to be vaccinated. Well, let's take something people don't do. Mercury, aluminum, lead, they're all known neurotoxins, right? We don't want lead in our paint. Well, if I put a glass of that in front of you and said, can you drink this? You would say, no, that's crazy. I won't drink that. That will make me sick. But if you have a nice, beautiful, one-day-old child who... You got married, you had a wife, you decided to have a baby, and you make a baby, and for nine months that child gets carried, and all your hopes and dreams are in that child. All your hopes and dreams. And then a day into that baby's life, that baby is injected with countless amounts of mercury, lead, and aluminum. Something that you wouldn't drink. Right? If I said drink it, you'd say no way, that'll make me sick. But you'll inject that into your child because that's a cultural norm. And someone who doesn't do it is considered an extremist, a radical, a weirdo. Take college as an example. Go to college, a university, get a real job. That's what they said to me. Successful in the minds of many people is going to college, maybe taking on $100,000, $150,000, $200,000 in debt. Maybe you'll study in sociology. Maybe you'll study in women's studies. And then 22 years old, you get out of college and you have $200,000 in debt and the best job you can get is paying $40,000 if you can get a job because your degree is pretty much worthless. That's nice. You studied women's studies. Now you can't get a job. Now you have $200,000 of debt, but you have a degree. And many people will say, well, you've been very successful. But someone else who decides not to go to college at 18 years old, maybe takes one year of vocational courses. Maybe they learn um, makeup or a skill like that. And then they start their own business. Maybe they incorporate, start their own business. Maybe they work for someone else, make $70,000 a year, and they have no debt and they're their own boss, well, this person, in the eyes of many, is considered uneducated, unsuccessful, ignorant. Yeah, that person's ignorant. Again, this is just people being brainwashed by cultural norms because if it wasn't the culture norm and you presented the two options, they'd say, yeah, I'm just going to do one year of quick schooling, have no debt, I'm going to be my own boss, I'm going to make a ton of money, it's going to be great. Cultural norms. Homeschooling. Speaking of education, 
If it wasn't the cultural norm, as it wasn't for most of human history, to have that little child that you nurtured, that all your hopes and dreams are in, that you want the world for, that in your mind that child's going to be, as I like to joke around, Socrates, Mike Tyson, the smartest person in the world, the most physically gifted person in the world, the Renaissance man, and you have that child, and for all of human history, all of human history, that child has remained home with usually the mother, but probably the mother and its mother and its father. And the parents teach the child and raise your child to be successful. But the cultural norm of today's society is at two years old, you take your child and you give it to the government. A government that has proven to be oh so caring of the people. Ran by politicians who are so virtuous. So altruistic. But it's the cultural norm. So people will give their child to the state for 18 years, let their child be brainwashed, indoctrinated into the very culture we're talking about. And if someone comes up to them and says, oh, my child doesn't go to school, I decided to homeschool my child. Well, that person will be ostracized. Well, you're weird, you're extreme, you're radical. Your child's going to be weird. Their child, but the truth is, if it wasn't for the cultural norms, the homeschool child isn't weird. It's everyone else, everyone else who's just brainwashed, who are completely incapable of making decisions for themselves, of thinking for themselves. But people are unable to see this. In order to make that child, you have to get married. But in today's culture, because we're being depopulated, everything projected on TV is, oh, people who get married at an early age that's a mistake. See what I did there? Right? You're, so, you're supposed to party until you're 30, not get married. Of course, they don't tell you that, for, especially for a woman, if you're not having children until after you're 30, it's increasingly difficult to get pregnant, especially if you've been on birth control for many years. But the cultural norm has been changed by the elites from the top on purpose. So now it's, it's weird. What do you mean? You get married? You're young? You have children at a young age? So, again, this is all controlled by culture. And if you just reverse it, if these things weren't the cultural norms and you looked at them objectively, if everyone else wasn't doing them, the things that everyone does, eating toxic crap, vaccinating children, drinking fluoride, studying women's studies and taking $200,000 of debt, partying until you're 32 because it's just not cool to grow up, These things would be viewed as very weird, but because they're the cultural norms, anyone who does it differently, that's the radical, that's the extremist. Most people in society are completely incapable of thinking for themselves. And I'm not saying I'm right about everything. I'm just saying that at least I think for myself, and I value that very much. And I know many of my listeners, I mean, (laughs) the, the some of the comments you write, blow my mind how incredible um i have so many homeschoolers who follow me which i really appreciate um just people who are able to make up their minds for themselves who don't do things because everyone else in society does them and it's very difficult to do things differently because you are ostracized right even on this youtube channel many people who know me they think it's they think it's weird that i do this they don't understand that i'm building my business that i'm on a mission my life has so much incredible purpose trying to reach the masses trying to free the minds of people that i see are enslaved and if i could just show them how the education system enslaves people how the media enslaves people popular culture enslaves people then I can help free minds, that I can make society a better place, I can make their lives a better place, I can make the future better, I can leave a real mark on this world. And there is so much power in that. Because once you start living your life with a purpose, your life becomes amazing. And it's not anyone else's purpose. You need to evaluate Everything you do, just as I do, as I said, I'm not perfect. And think, do you do it because you have decided 
it's what you want, it's the right decision, or do you do it because it is a cultural norm and anyone who doesn't is a radical, is an extremist, is weird. I'm Tom Anderson, FFR News. Thanks for watching, guys. Support the Liberty Movement and gain exclusive access to Patreon-only videos for as little as $1 a month at www.patreon.com slash FFRnews.